Beady eyes flashing with hatred. Great teeth gnashing with rage. Powerful fingers flexing, flexing, eager to crush out life. The huge ape glared down at us from the great durian tree. How were we to dislodge him from his perch and bring him back alive? That is the story of Giant Jungle Man. From the tangled wilds of Borneo, from the mystic mountains of Tibet, from the fierce jungles of Malaya, bring them back alive. RKO Radio Pictures presents Bring Them Back Alive. Filmed in the depths of the Malayan jungle, the only wild animal picture which can never be duplicated, Frank Buck's original Bring Them Back Alive is authentic, thrilling, packed with action and suspense. The dramatic story of the jungle, the land of the short shadows, where survival of the fittest is the law of life. See Frank Buck in Bring Them Back Alive. And now, for the first time on the air, RKO presents The Jungle Adventures of Frank Buck. The jungles of Sumatra, where I went on an expedition shortly after filming the motion picture Bring Him Back Alive, are as thick and dark and beautiful as any in the world. The trees are huge, giant durians towering a full 200 feet in the air. Matted with vines and creepers, make a complete roof over your head. And in places, blot out entirely the sun and the sky, the breeze, so that you struggle through a hot, dim, perpetual twilight. And you feel that the rest of the world does not exist, that there is only the jungle. And it was to Sumatra that I went, seeking to capture a giant orangutan. Majestic and savage, the orangutan is a member of the Anthropoid Ape family. He is built like a man except that he has shorter legs and longer arms, that he has man's dignity, and sometimes more than some men's sense. I compare him to man because that is how the Batiks, the natives, think of him. In their language, Urang means man, and Utan means jungle. So Urang Utan means man of the jungle. And sometimes they add the word bizarre, meaning huge, enormous. My jungle man was indeed bizarre. He was the largest orangutan ever captured alive. When I told Ali, my number one boy, why we were going to Sumatra, he was full of objection. Young orangutan, we catch plenty. Get plenty from Batik or Dayak. Big orang no can catch. Big orang kill man. Why not get young orang? Wait for him to grow big. <laughs> well, I'm afraid that wouldn't work, Ali. I need a full-grown orang for an exhibition next year. Orang live only in Sumatra or Borneo. Mm -hmm. White man law say no can take big orang away. Well, we'll go to Sumatra. I think I can make arrangements, sir. But when the necessary permission came through, we motored to the edge of the jungle, then followed jungle trails to a batik village where I had dealt with the Bangula, the headman, on other animal hunting expeditions. Ali held a palaver with the batik leader and returned to report... Tuan, Pangula hmm? say me as bizarre, big orang in this forest. He sure it's a big one? He say me as so big, three shakes when he climb. So big he darken sky when he swing through treetops. All right, tell the Pangula we'll make camp here. Tell him to get his scouts on the trail of this me as bizarre, and when they find him, I'll see what he looks like. Pangula say me as look like giant. Very fierce, very strong. Snap neck of men like bamboo. Break back like dry stick. Ah, uh, Pangula is just building up for a better payoff. Tell Pangula I pay his scouts the usual amount. Pangula say Orang very dangerous. Tell him I'll pay his men a bonus if the Orang is full grown. I tell. Good. But Pangula say must be careful. Already Orang killed two men. Pangula say hunting Orang like hunting death. Like hunting death. Yes, if a giant orangutan closes his huge fingers about a man, draws him close, sinks those sharp canine teeth, sharper and stronger than any tiger's teeth, it means death. Hunting an orangutan was hunting danger. But you don't have to hunt danger in the jungle. Danger hunts you. And while the Pangula dispatched his scouts in search of the orangutan, Ali and I set up our jungle camp. Next morning... Yes! To one, to one. But Tick say have found big orang. So soon? Find him in jungle. Up our way. Say Tiga Makinsari. Hmm? Three chews of beetle not away, eh? Three or four miles. 
Well, we'd better get going if we want to get there before dark. Yes, come quick. Now we catch giant jungle man. Vines tangled the jungle growth. Ali and the Batiks chopped our way with parangs, strong jungle knives. And the trees arched overhead, shutting off the sun. The air was heavy, humid. Myriad insects and flies swarmed about our faces. Leeches clung to the damp underbrush, attached themselves to our skin. Orchids bloomed and rotted in the tree forks. And all about us, the voices of the jungle chattered and hummed and cried. Silent only when death walked. Tuan, better we rest some, huh? Uh, how much farther, Ali? Not far, but Arang keep moving on. Batik's trail him. We plugged on. Sweat beaded our faces. Drenched our clothes. We fought our way through slime and muck. While up ahead, our quarry swung along lightly in the cool treetops. At last we heard the voices of the scouts, and finally we came out into a wooded area where the undergrowth was not so thick. The Batiks were surrounding a giant durian tree, and high in its branches the orangutan perched, staring at the queer creatures on the ground as men stare at animals in a zoo. Eyes bright in a wide, flat face like black leather. Sandy reddish hair dripping from his long arms like Spanish moss from a southern oak. Mias Bizarre. Enormous jungle man. So big the trees shook when he moved. Big, you see, Tuan? Big like house. Yes, he's big, all right. It's a good thing we made that cage as big as we did. Cage big enough, but get around in cage. That's big job, too. Yeah, this is a good spot to try. The other trees around him are small. Look, tell Pangula to get his men to surround that tree. Keep the orang where he is. How keep him in tree when men on ground? Mias jump from tree to tree, make road in tree top. Well, we'll just remove that road, surround the tree, drive him up higher, then get axes and cut down the other trees, clear a space around that durian so he'll have to come down if he tries to get away. Leave Mias in tree like men on desert island. Mm-hmm. Angula! Angula, keep Mias in tree! Get axes! We catch Mias Pizar! Two and all finished. Three all clear now. Good. Now, get that net in place and give him my rifle. Rifle? Mm-hmm. You shoot bigger end? No, no. You remember the stunt I used with that leopard we caught last year? Yes, remember. Kuching in three. Yeah. We shot the limb out from under him and he fell in the net. You think can do the same with Mias? Well, we can try anyway. Concora! Come in with net! Get on the tree! The batiks on reluctant feet brought the heavy rope mesh net under the tree. High in the durian, the fierce eyes of the orangutan were calm and curious and a little contemptuous. But the eyes of the Batiks were anything but calm. They showed white with fear as trembling hands supported the net. Ali handed me my rifle. Slim not too big. Not take too many shots. Uh, three or four should do it if I place them right. Good. Two and hit Lim first time. Now one a little farther down. Hit again. Oh, me as not like. Move farther out on limbs. So much the better. The farther out he gets, the sooner his weight will break the limb. Limb cracking. Limb falling. Oh, it's no good. Limb fall, but Mia's jump. See? Mia's jump to another limb. Oh, it's no use to one. Not catch Mia's that way. No, Ollie. No, I guess all we can do is wait till he gets hungry and thirsty enough to come down. Not catch him in trap on ground. No. If he come down, he run for jungle. Well, we'll have the butt cheeks keep the net ready. When he comes down, they can throw it over him, tangle him in it, and shove him in the cage nut and all. Well, Batik not like tangle or ang. Batik afraid. Tell the Pongulu if they catch him in the net, I'll double the bonus. They can try. Orang maybe not like tangle net. Maybe Orang tangle us. Five days I spent in a jungle lean-to. Five days while the tropic sun drew clouds of steam from the damp earth in the clearing. Earth that had, until we cleared the trees, not felt the sun since the world was young. And five nights while the insects hummed and bit and drove sleep away. Leaves for a roof, earth for a bed, and the open jungle for walls. But we had food and water. And on his perch in the durian tree, the jungle man had neither. And as the time passed, the rage in his eyes was fire. Sooner or later, he'd have to come down. Then my boys would capture him in a net. Or so I thought. Tuan, orang start down tree. Pangulu, get those boys up there with a the net. Now, if they can roll him in that net, we'll have him. Mia's almost to ground now. Come on, Ollie. Come on. There he come. Yeah. All right. Watch out for him. All right. Get 
Pinero really quick. Come on, the Pinero ring. He throw back dick 20 feet. Yeah. I didn't go back up three. Tuan, Tuan, where are you? Help me out of this alley. That confounded ape wrapped me up in the net. High up in the durian tree, the jungle man leered down at us. At the edge of the clearing, the scared white eyeballs of the batik surveyed the scene. Since the orang had thrown one of them through the air, broken his neck, I'd never get the natives to try the net again. There was only one thing to do. Set the trap with its heavy log door in a crotch in the tree. So we attached ropes to the corners, threw them over limbs of the durian, and the natives hauled away. Ali climbed three guide trap. I'll keep the orang covered with my rifle in case he starts for you, Ali. If Mia start for Ali, shoot for Mia, not for three limb. Ali not want to fly yet. All right, don't worry. You better get going. Angulo, easy now. Let Ali untangle that rope. Rope loose. Pull again. Mia, stay off limb. Throw at me. Stay where you are, Ali. I'll put a stop to that. All right, Ali. I fired close to him. He's going higher. Pull away on those ropes, Pangula. Run! Huh? Run! Here is good place to pass the trap. Hold it, Pangula. Watch me as he's coming down. All right, he's going back again, Ali. All right, trap fixed. Put nice piece on. Nice banana, lots of banana inside. It's all fixed. Ali, come down now. From his perch high above us, the giant jungle man peered down. His brow wrinkled like a pawnbroker calculating a sale. He was suspicious, but he was hungry, too. Pangolo, get those men back out of the clearing. The natives drew back. I watched the giant orang. Ali crouched near me. Tuan, look, he come. Slowly, slowly, the giant anthropoid eased down the tree. Nearer, nearer he approached the trap. One hand reached out, touched the cage, drew back. Look. He tried to touch food. Yeah. You put it back where he can't reach it, didn't you? Ada, yes. We back. Have to go in. Yeah. Oh, Mia's plenty gila. Plenty mad. Look. Look, he go in. See, door falling place. We have catch jungle men. The giant orang struggled for several minutes. Then philosophy took over. After all, he was hungry. And there in the cage was food. He reached for the bananas and started eating. Months later, at the exposition, my giant orangutan was on display, and a visitor asked, Mr. Buck, hmm? how did you catch this orangutan? Well, in Sumatra, orangutan means jungle man. Ask your wife, sir. The way to a man's heart is through his stomach. Killers of the jungle. A fight to the death with a crocodile. A mad elephant on a rampage. A battle royal between a 30-foot python and a tiger. See? Bang, I'm back alive. RKO Radio Pictures has presented a jungle adventure of Frank Buck. In this series of original radio dramas, all characters are impersonated. See and hear Frank Buck in person in his great wild animal picture, the original Bring Him Back Alive. Filmed in the depths of the Malayan jungle, the only wild animal picture which can never be duplicated, Bring Them Back Alive is authentic, thrilling, packed with action, danger, suspense. It's a picture for every member of the family, an exciting experience in motion picture entertainment. See the most ferocious jungle killers in their native haunts. See... Bring Them Back Alive. It's another great RKO radio picture.